My name is Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm Nicole. I'm Eli. And I'm Jason. And we are the Hunter YouTube channel. And it is a Shabbat, and we thank you guys very, very much for hanging out with us. <clears throat> it is one of these um, odd days down here in South America, and if you guys hear what sounds like a hurricane, we are in that season. Uh, and so we have a dry season, we have wet season, and then we have windy season. And um, it literally probably gusts 20 to 30 miles an hour at all times. And um, some days we have, a, it's, it's calm, it doesn't do anything. But for the majority of these months that we are in, the wind just howls and it just goes crazy. So let's begin with a little bit of prayer. Precious Heavenly Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you so much for dwelling with us. We thank you for your Torah. We thank you for your son. We thank you for preparing a road for us, Father. I ask for blessings for everybody that is listening in on this, that you will walk with us, that you will talk with us, that you will be our Elohim, Father. We are your people. Father, please dwell with us through everything. Father, we thank you again for your Torah and for your beauty of your creation and for bringing us together in this little ecclesia. And I thank you for uh, the most important thing ever, which is your son. Father, we are on our way to the kingdom road. We ask that you will accept us in and we're ready for your for the king when he is ready to come. We thank you for everything. We ask this in the name of Yahushua. Amen. All right. How is everybody out there? How are you guys around this table? Good. 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 Everyone good? Everyone alive? Um, Miss Nicole, who do we have? Um, let's say hi to our peeps in the Ecclesia, the little Ecclesia here. All right. We have the Grand. Judith is here. You're probably going to speak up with this wind. I don't, know if, I don't know if everyone can. I got to scoot closer. All right. Let's, let's, <laughs> so we got Grand. The Grand. Graham is here. Uh, Judith is here. Living. I've, I've seen Living. Uh -huh. uh, message on some stuff. Hi, guys. Hi, everyone. Claire. Hi, Claire. Uh, Dreg. Hi, Dreg. Emissary of Elohim. Brother Emissary of Elohim. And Marjan. Marjan? 
Marjan. Mar Marjan. Hi. Marjan. Sorry, I slaughter her names. Zachary Z, Rhiannon, and I'm sure the rest of their families here, all the kids. All right, Sligers. Hey, everybody. It is so good to see you guys. It is grand. It is so good to see all of you guys. All right, let us begin with a little bitty itty thing that we like to call Le Shema. Now, the Shema is a beautiful little green, and I saw Emissary of Elohim put in the Shema, and we appreciate him always dropping in these comments and always dropping in the stuff. And um, let us begin with this. Okay, Deuteronomy 6. And for those who do not know who Yashrael is, Yashrael could potentially be you. You could be a part of Yashrael. You will not be a part of Yashrael if you do not keep the laws, statutes, and commands of our Creator. That's one thing that we know that you will not be. And since there is no house of Gentile or house of Christian or house of Catholic or house of Mormon or anything like that, all we know in Hebrews 8 is that there is a house of Yashrael and also a house of Yehuda. But this is for us. Here we go. Hear, O Yashrael, Yahuwah Eloheinu. Yahuwah is one. And you shall love Yahuwah Eloheka with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And these words which I command you this day shall be in your heart. And you shall teach them diligently unto your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise up. And you shall bind them for a sign upon your hand and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. And you shall write them upon the posts of your house and on your gates. Okay, that is a uh, very beautiful thing right here. Gentlemen, um, what do you guys make of anything on the Shema? Um, it's, uh, it's a thing for us. It's a thing for all generations. It's a thing for us. Kind of like a, uh, only a battle cry for us. It's a thing for us to remember. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's very odd. I, not odd, but it's, it's one of these things that it begins where it, it says, Yahuwah is one. Why do you think it says that right out the gate? Why do we have this in Torah? Probably so people are confused when other people say, like, I am Yahuwah, or they come and say, hey, worship, come worship this Elohim, you know? Because he talks a lot about, a lot of the commands are about don't worship other Elohim, don't have idols. So it's like, Yahuwah is one. There's no Elohim besides him. He is the only one. Yeah, you know, that that is something, you know, we have also Deuteronomy 4.2, which says we are not to add to or take away anything from the Torah. That when we see that Yahuwah is one, any time that we reach and we, we hear, I guess, the, the teachers on YouTube and the people that, you know, there, there's there's a they're the Trinity, which everybody knows about. Then there is something that I just learned about last week that I, I, I thought everybody was in the Trinity. But I guess there is a thing called oneness where they believe that Messiah Yahushua, who you guys call Jesus the Christ and Yahuwah, are the exact same entities. Now, they don't say that the Holy Spirit or the Ruach HaKadosh is is part of this this grouping but they still say messiah and yahuwah are the exact same people and i didn't realize that so when we look at deuteronomy 6 if we do not want to break the torah if we want to be right with the torah and this says right out of the gate the very first line yahuwah is one if we say that yahuwah and yahushua are one we are breaking a commandment we're breaking we're breaking this right we know based upon what our creator has said that this is what it is all right, so we are going to continue on and let us begin into, we're gonna do this a little different today. It's gonna be a little bit cool. Well, a little cooler than normal. We're gonna start at the very bottom of our commandments. And what you guys are looking at right here is you are looking at the last commandment and we're going to go from 157 all the way to one. And for those who don't, have never heard of this before or for those who do not understand what a blessing the commandments are to people, these are these blessings that most people reject. These are the commandments that most people reject. These are the pictures of life that most people reject. And so this is what we're trying to do is we're trying to bring a little bit of fascination into the Torah because the Torah is extremely fascinating. It's extremely brilliant and it's a, it's a, it's a beautiful thing. All right, let us begin right here. Yeah, it, it, Greg, it does sound like an ocean. Yeah, brother, um, our house down here is really, really funky. And um, for those who made it through us with the wet season, um, the rain is so loud here. And the wind, you can literally see parts of our roof in various places, they, it all lifts up. And it is, it is a crazy place down here. All right, so here we are. And um, these laws, statutes, and commandments that we are, we are about to go over, 
these are what we should write upon our hearts, upon our minds, upon our souls, upon our doorposts, upon the frontlets of our eyes. We should. These are what we need to immerse ourselves into every single day. And there is that wind, guys, so I hope you guys can hear over this stuff. All right, let us begin. Commandment 157. At the end of seven years, you are to read the Torah at the Feast of Sukkot. If your brother dies and has no child, you shall take his wife and name the firstborn after your brother. Do not muzzle your ox when he treads out the grain. Do not go back for the forgotten sheep in the field, leave it for the stranger, fatherless, and widow. Every man shall be put to death for his own sin. Do not oppress a hired servant that is needy and poor. If you lend to your brother, do not enter his house to get your payment. He must bring it to you. Return his clothing before sunset if that was his pledge. Do not take a person's millstone for a pledge. Law of divorce. Do not use dirty money. Do not be a prostitute. If you build a new house with a flat roof that it will be lived on, you must put a railing around it. Just speak up, son. The wind is going to take you out. If get you find a bird's nest with the mother and the babies or eggs, take the babies, but not the mother. A woman should not wear what pertains to a man, nor a man wear what pertains to a woman. If your, cat, if your brother's cattle or clothes are lost and you find them, you must return them. The first child is to get double portions. How to deal with false witness among Torah keepers. Do not remove your prop neighbor's property line. Prophet test of Deuteronomy. Hearken unto the prophet Yahuwah has chosen. There are, no, there, there must be two or three witnesses. Do not plant Ashroth poles near the altar. You shall make judges and officers in all your gates. Three times a year, all males shall appear before Yahuwah. Guard month one of Yahuwah's calendar. Do not harden your heart nor shut your hand from the poor. Do not borrow from the nations. Laws of the ends of the seven-year release. Give tithe of your increase of seed year by year. You shall give to a stranger of clean food that dies of itself, but you shall not eat of it. You shall not eat it. You shall not eat any abominable thing. Do not make any baldness between your eyes for the dead. Do not hearken the words of false prophets. Do, do not do what is right in your own eyes. Rejoice in all Yahuwah has blessed you with. Do not make an idol of Yahuwah as the pagans do to their Elohim. Destroy graven images. Swear by his name. Cleave to Yahuwah. Circumcise your heart. Remember Yahuwah. Do not be afraid of your enemies. Do what is right and good in the sight of Yahuwah. Do not tempt Yahuwah. Write the laws on your doorposts. Bind the laws upon your hand and the front list between your eyes. You shall love Yahuwah with all your heart. Learn to fear Yahuwah. Guard your soul. Do not add or take away from the word. Now let's talk about this again. These are certain things. Now, guys, if since we're at 108, number 108, is there any less importance on this commandment other than, say, commandment one, which is be fruitful? No. The, is the, That's every does, single command is almost is equally important. I mean, there's a few probably like love Yahuwah is probably the most important command. Yeah, because if we love Yahuwah, what would we what would we do? How would we We'd prove? obey him. We do what he says. You know, if you love someone, you're going to do what they say. You're going to help them. You're going to... You're going to respect them. Yeah, you know, and I, again, I just had that long conversation with my mother again this weekend, and I might have to update you guys every Shabbat on it because I, I do love my mother. I love my mother dearly, and she is stuck in churchianity. She is absolutely stuck on that, and yesterday, I, as calmly and as as politely as I, I could, I just, I explained to her that, Mom, this is not a grace religion. There's no such thing as grace, grace, grace. Um, mercy, mercy, mercy. That is a that is lies. That is all lies. Although we have been given grace, although we have been given mercy, none of that takes away the the point that we need to be obedient. You're not going to get grace, and you're not going to get mercy as a disobedient child, gentlemen. How many times have you gotten grace and mercy when you guys were being very bad? It, 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 Seriously. Is there grace and mercy and when you guys are being bad? No. No? And so it, it, how does that work? Do you guys look at this and go, yeah, hey, you, you know, punished. Please. Yeah. And how many times do you guys uh, say, well, you know, come on, Dad. This time, it's, gonna, it's not going to be like this anymore. Forgive me for my sins. Yeah, forgive me for my sins. What happens? Um, you get thumped. You all get thumped. And you should get thumped. Rightfully so. Yeah. Okay. Um, just hearing about you guys on going to the junkyard excavates. Good. Yeah, you know, I was reading that. Well, Emissary of Elohim, brother, you you, you missed this. Uh, once you hear this week's early one, I shot myself in the head with a 50 cal air gun. Uh, bounced off the front. Bounced off his head and shot me. This It was last first day. Yeah. So, yeah. So, Jaden's head is good. Um, my head was dripping blood. So, yeah, it's, it's a wild house around here. All right. So, let's not let's continue on. Do not take away from the word. Torah of keeping your oath to Yahuwah. Follow Yahuwah's law of inheritance. 
the laws of whoever touches a corpse. Are we getting are we getting smoked here? Going up backwards, guys. Is this the problem? It's, <laughs> <laughs> I got, go the rhythm and the flow table. isn't working here. <laughs> wear ZZ on the four corners of your garments. Okay, what are ZZ, Jaden? And why would we wear these on the four corners of our they garments? They are like blue strings or blue like tassels that you put on the four corners commanded of us, so that we remember the laws of Yahuwah, so we know who we are. Yeah, and um, I would say the only time you shouldn't wear ZZs is when you're wearing when you're running a motor on the side of you. Power you, tools. Power tools, and you get it sucked up in the side yeah, yeah, of our yeah. weed eater, and it costs us a ton to get it out. Okay, let's continue on. 103, the Torah of being a Nazir. Confess your sins to Yahuwah and repay who you have trespassed against. Honor the Jubilee year. Repay injury for injury. If you kill your neighbor's animal, you must give him another. If you blaspheme the neighbor of the name of Yahuwah, you shall be put to death. Keep the feast of Sukkot, Shemni Atzeret. Keep the feast of trumpets, Yam Torah. Keep the feast of first fruits, Shavuot, and the Omer Count. Do not walk in the manners of the nations. Okay, let's stop real quick, guys. What does that mean, walking in the manners of the nations? Since no, we're going backwards. I guess doing is what yeah. they do. Yeah, so what, is that, what does that look like? Um, Christmas, Super Bowls. Super Bowls. What uh, else? Uh, any of the pagan holidays, anything that they do, like uh, the nations, they all go to church on Sunday. What about pledging your allegiance to the flag? That's the nation. Yeah, that's definitely a nation. I think that's just an American thing. No, I, I, I don't know. Maybe it might be an American thing. I, I don't know anything is. else. I don't know. Does anyone, anyone else out there have any other country other than U.S.? Do they pledge allegiance to your guys' flags? I, I don't I know. I think they do. I think they all have national anthems. Do they, But do they have the kids stand and, and put true. their hand over their I heart? I don't know about that one. Yeah, hey, it's Jeannie. Hi, all right, all right. So that's it. Do not walk in the manners of the nations. That is looking and smelling like the world and tasting like the world. And if you look, smell, and taste like the world, then by default you are the world. Okay. Have correct weights and measurements. Respect your elders. Do not consult the medium. Do not defile your temple. Do not prostitute your daughter. Do not get tattoos. Do not cut yourself for the dead. Do not round your beard or the corners of your head. Do not practice sorcery. Do not eat the fruit of the trees for three years. Do not lie with a taken woman. Do not mingle linen and wool. Do not mingle your seed. Do not divert your cattle. Love your neighbor as yourself. Rebuke your neighbor for his sin. Do not hate your brother. Do not endanger your neighbor. Do not harm the disabled. Pay your workers for the day's wage they are due. Do not lie or be a liar. Do not deal false here to defraud your neighbor. Do not reap the corners of your field, or you shall not glean your vineyard. Be holy. Do, Do not, not be, be a sodomite. There you go. That was uh, some stereo sound there. You shall not sacrifice your children to Moloch. Do not lie with a woman in her uncleanness. Do not take your woman's sister for wife. Do not uncover the nakedness of your family. Keep the Day of Atonement. Yom Kippurim. Obey Yahuwah's hygiene laws. Women's time of separation. Obey Yahuwah's dietary laws. Return what is your neighbor's. Do what you say you are going to do. Do not eat the fat. Do Good. not make or use this perfume on a normal person. And that goes with 56, which is another anointing oil, which is, you know, we, we heard about something like this. Where was it that we heard? Somebody went and, oh, they tried to anoint them. That was some of the grifter people. They took a anointing oil. And this is something that, um, th guys, this is a, there's a certain oils that, that we were given a recipe for. And these are two commandments that are all about these two separate oils that we're not supposed to use on, on people. And so, you know, if somebody wants to come and anoint you with oil, you better first of all understand who they are and who's touching you and what exactly that they are putting on you, for sure. Living wants to know, what does it mean to mingle your seed? Uh, do not mingle our seed. Let's look at this. Where are we, what kind of is this? Let's just get bit. There it is, 81. 81, so where are we at, 81? All right, do not mingle, what is the full uh, commandment on this one, guys? Uh, do not mingle with seeds, basically you're not supposed to mix two forms of seeds dealers and Asians do. Um, is, this the, is this the one where we are, where, where's the full commandment? Do you guys have it, anyone? No. Go over there to the other full ones, and let's read the commandment. What verse do you guys? It's Leviticus 19.19 19 and Deuteronomy 22.9. Okay. This. 19. Is the one about this is the seeding the filth, right? Yeah, all right. Nice is you shall guard my statutes, you shall not lay your cattle a gender with a diverse kind, you shall not sow your fill of mingled seed. Okay, so when, when we were going over this before, the, the closest thing that we could figure out is that we, we found these guys like over in like Japan where they would take um, like a whole bunch of different seeds and they would put them all in their hand and they would basically have their field and they would just throw them out. And in the sea, and basically it grows up, but it brings them all together. 
And there is a, the way that our creator has stuff, as far as, as mingling seed, is you, you're, you're supposed to put all the main stuff together. Yeah, um, even between two different types of the same species of plant. Yeah, and, and we found that out as well as with corn and with watermelon and things of this nature. And especially down in South America, like if you wanted to buy corn seed, it's all mixed up. And so if you plant in a field that you get of corn seed, the, the corn looks broken. Like it completely looks broken. Some are t small and some are large. When you mingle the seed, when, when it comes down to things like pollination and lots of various other things, there is issues with it. And so it should be one field with one kind of stuff and you should not mingle it out in that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, and corn, like like the emissary said, it, it corn makes it, it's literally retarded corn. Um, we, we did an entire field of it, and the field, it looked very, very bad. And you could definitely tell it was mingled seed because it was like one corn was like one color, one corn was another color. Some had, just it just looked very bad. And so that is what that means. And so when you're planting a field, we should, if you, you plant all the same kind of seed, all the same watermelon, all the same corn, all the same stuff, we don't, we don't do it like, um, you know, just throw it out there and let it grow up. And, and um, people have talked about it before, and it does come down to a pollination or some kind of a things that we, unless you were like a plant person, you probably wouldn't know, but it does come down to how the production works with Yacht. So hopefully that helps a little bit. All right, where are we at, gentlemen? 55. Where are we at? 55. 55. All right. Spin your guys' heads down right there watching right. this. There it is. Make no covenant with other Elohim or outsiders of the land. Serve Yahuwah. Do not bow down to other Elohim. Obey the messenger Yahuwah sends thee for you. Do not cook your goat in his mother's milk. Keep the feast of Yahuwah. Do not mention any pagan names. Give your land rest in the seventh year. Um, let's, let's, let's talk real quick. Living. Living. Um, well, you know, GMO products, and the question was, what was the question on that? Because it popped up and left. Does this also have to do with GMO products? Well, the thing about GMO products is... It's it's a poison product out of right out of the gate. Everything that deals with GMO is taking the hand of our Creator and is altering stuff, especially with like Monsanto stuff, um, where they have like it's like uh, what they call suicide corn or suicide um, seeds, where it's only good for one time. And if you try to replant the babies of these seeds, they they won't grow. And so anything GMO, I would say, is an abomination to our Creator. Um, because it makes us all completely sick. And, and so I don't think that's what it means with GMO stuff like or with mingling the seed. We're talking like physically bringing um, non-polluted seeds and you're just taking like say 10 kinds of corn and throwing them all in a field and trying to let them grow up and your fields will be very weak. Your, your crops will be very, very weak. And that has to do with um, it, it's uh, the race of corn or the race of whatever it is. Like Emissary just said, certain variety of plants need to be separated by kilometers to avoid cross-pollination contamination, which could influence or destroy crops. Yeah, absolutely. And we, we've had that before because we're trying to grow a special strain of corn down here that they don't have down here. And um, we're afraid that, you know, when the pollination comes, the other it's going to pollute our corn and things of that nature. Yeah, the genetically modified. Yeah, Dreg, it, it definitely says it all. And it, it and for you know this for you guys, I mean, there, a lot of you guys probably know this stuff, but nearly everything you get nowadays is GMO'd out. And it's not just the GMOs; it is the stuff inside of the foods, um, the colors and the dyes, like the red four, red forty, yellow five, yellow six, um, caramel coloring. Um, some of that stuff in like Subway food is like uh, it's the yoga mask stuff. What is that? BHT uh, or something. Yeah. Kerogen. I mean, literally everything in every place in every realm of life now, they've put all these poisons in that. And a lot of the dyes and a lot of the colorings that they use in the U.S. are banned in other countries, right? You can't use them because they know it hurts you. But for some reason, um, it's bad. And literally eating a bag of um, M&Ms, you get dumber simply by, it, it's scientific. The yellow five and yellow six and all the dyes that are in that, we, we scientifically get dumber with every bite we take. And the BHT is jet fuel, by the way. BHT, jet fuel, yeah, it's, it's all over the place. All right, let's continue on. Um, where are we at, anyone? Uh, 47. 47. All right, 47. Do not oppress the stranger, love the stranger. Take, take no bribes. Stay away from rumors and gossipers. Help the animals of your enemy. Bring back your enemy's cattle if you find it going astray. Do not judge unrighteously against the poor. Do not follow a multitude of evil. No false report. Uh, do what? Do not eat what is torn of any beast. Do not curse the ruler of your people. If you borrow your neighbor's raiment, return it to him before sunset. Do not charge your brother interest. No sacrifices to other gods. Uh, you, 
do we do, we do, do not press stranger files yeah, or widow? Yeah, 35. Did we do that one? No. no. All right. Oh, I missed it. All right. Yeah, so don't do it. Don't oppress the fatherless stranger or widow. We love our widows. We love the fatherless. And we love the strangers. That's what we're called to do. And this is a very important commandment because it seems like this, this commandment gets broken daily by a lot of people. And we have forgotten the widows. We've forgotten the fatherless. We've forgotten the strangers. And um, we, we attack them. And it's the craziest thing. Okay. Do not lie with beast. Yeah, who has law, laws for criminals? If a man steals cattle, he should restore it five times. Do not go up to the altar by the steps. Do not make an altar from a rock that was touched. Do not cut anything of your neighbors. Do not make a false accusation against your neighbor. Do not steal. Do not break woodlock. Do not kill. Honor your parents. Sorry, guys. This is this is actually a little more complex going down than going up. Okay, keep the Sabbath day. Here we are. We are to commandment number 22. And if you guys look, there are a lot of verses here, but there are a tremendous amount more. It's mentioned, I think, I can't remember, was it 200 times or something? In there's like over 200 times that we are talked to and told that we need to keep this day. The day that we are all sitting here and for this little ecclesia here, this is our day, right? This is our day of rest. This is uh, the day that man was, man, man was, man was not made for this day. The day was made for man, is and what it is. And so we are here. Okay, now let's keep it rolling. Uh, uh, do not bring Yahuwah's name to naught. You shall not make graven images. There yep. are no mighty ones before Yahuwah. Sanctify all for, firstborn to Yahuwah. There's one Torah for the stranger and the Hebrew. Keep the feast of unleavened bread, matzah. Keep the Passover, Pesach. Remember Yahuwah's name for all generations. Teach your children the commands and guard the way of Yahuwah. Every male shall be circumcised at eight days old. Uh, yeah, guard Yahuwah's covenant, laws, statutes, and commandments. Okay, and if you guys see this one, as look at this sucker scrolling up. There are a lot of these right here. Bam. This is um, 53 times, over 53 times, my friends, we are told to guard Yahuwah's laws, covenants, and statutes, right? 53 times or more. The, this is by far the largest commandment that has, has been relisted out. There are no other commandments in the scriptures that have over 53 times that we are told, hey, you need to guard it. You need to take care of it. And if you, for some reason, believe that guarding the laws means that you put them on the cross and you don't have to keep them or that they were abolished, that isn't what guarding the laws means, right? That would be that would mean mean you're not guarding the laws of our Creator. All right, walk before me and be perfect. Do not eat the blood. Every clean moving thing that lives shall be food for you, Master Sin. Man and woman should build their own families. The herb bearing and every tree is for food. Subdue it. Have dominion over the fish, fowl, and every living creature. Replenish the earth. Multiply. Be, be fruitful. Be fruitful. There we did it. We did it from the down up and we made it. Um, and that, yeah, this was a very, very awesome conversation that we had in this. And this is what we love about this little Clessy. You know, we can break out and we can start talking about this stuff. And, you know, stuff like, um, like Emissary was talking about with glyphosate, right? Um, that's stuff that nobody really knows about. Many, many, many countries have glyphosate illegalized right and it, it, it is a, it is a toxin and what they will do and eat, still in the states it's still legal um, it's still legal in the states right isn't it still legal yeah yeah I think it's still legal glyphosate um, and that stuff it doesn't just get into the crops and it, it is the in down here in South America I everybody uses glyphosate right if you want to do a field in the middle of the jungle there's no other way to do it without glyphosating unless you are really ready to work and you have a really small field. So what they will do is they will go and grab it and it's the Monsanto stuff or they just sell straight glyphosate and they spray the field. It dies really quickly. They can plant and in four to five months, the, everything comes back. But you have four to five months that they will produce this and glyphosate goes into your food and it causes cancer. It's carcinogen. It is very, very deadly. Um, and it's very, it's very bad. And so that's one of these things that, you know, why is it still legal? Why do people still do all this stuff? And, and my dad was a farmer when I was growing up. I lived up, I grew up on a farm and he was talking to me, uh, it was a couple of months ago and he says he still coughs up this blue purple dye from one time that he was out spraying these fields, um, on this thing we had that called the dry farm. And he sprayed this stuff out and he said by the time he was done spraying it, he started coughing this stuff up. And to this day, he's injured because of the, the chemicals that are used in all of this stuff. And so eating organic is extremely expensive. It's also extremely 
important that if, if, if possible, that everybody tries to eat as organic as possible because that's the, the name game. But Which, I read something the other day that organic fields are even being polluted with glyphosate because it's in the soil oh, and it, it spreads and, and everything. And, so and a lot of the organics have been tested with it now. Right, and absolutely. And you will find in what we found, because we used to own an organic food store down here in South America, um, you will find that all of these people that say they're organic, they sneak all of this stuff in there. And so it, it really is sick how they polluted all of our food, all of our water, out, uh, everywhere. And it's worldwide. It seems like it's worse in the United States for sure because they allow all this to happen. But it, it's a mess. Yeah. Okay. Uh, they're talking about the Ohio thing. Oh. Uh, we need to pray for the people in Ohio for the, the I, chemical train that Oh, the, the chemical train. Yeah. I, I don't even know what we can say on YouTube that we won't get... Um, I don't know um I, I can't I, I can't say anything like on any of this stuff or no, we just need to pray for yes them. let's do let's definitely pray for everybody in this this stuff and you know it looks you know I, I mean you don't have to be a rocket science to see this but it, it almost looks like there are they are blowing North America up like they are poisoning from one coast to the next like they are literally it's uh, been four four what trains that for that, that, that yeah recently. yeah and, and you know it's it's it, you look at this long enough, it's obvious what they are doing. And, you know, it's obvious when you get banned on YouTube for saying anything like that. So um, we'll leave it at that. But let's pray for this. Let's pray that our the kingdom will come, that Messiah Yahushua will come and wipe all of these people off, the people that are just very, very evil. We are awaiting the king. And that is the only hope that we have on these lands is we are awaiting the king. The rest of it, we're just watching these demons take over this world and try to kill everyone off. All right, let's continue on. Let us go into this. And so we are going into Genesis today. And um, yeah, yeah, <laughs> don't say that emissary. You get us all booted off here, Holmes. Okay, um, let us begin. And I think I'm about to begin. There it is. All right, so we are bringing up the Targums at the top. And we have the ex Halu scriptures at the bottom. These people, they lost their scriptures. They're very irresponsible. And so they have lost it and has now become Yahuwah's full scriptures which they always were, and we are now in Genesis 25, and we were going through this. Uh, did you just jack this up, Eli? It's, it's game over, son. Oh, you made it. Good job. All right, everyone ready? Everyone in the chat room? You guys all ready? Let us begin. Oh, hold on. Before we do that, we need to go into Sefer real quick because I need to show you guys. Sorry. Let me show you this real quick. Um, right here. Where's that, Eli? Uh, Jasher 2440. All right, so we're going first into Jasher. Why isn't it right it there? right there. You have I say, oh, yeah, Jasher. Blind. Getting old. 24? Yeah. All right. And? Phone day? 40. 40. All right. So this is where we were talking last week. And um, one of the things that we were talking about is the incredibly young age of um, one of our, our, our gals, you know, one of our, our four women that was in there. Um, let's read this right here. Um, 39, starting in Jasher 24, 39. And they all blessed Yahuwah, who brought this thing about, and they gave him Rivka, the daughter of Bethuel, for a woman for Yitchat. And the young woman was of very comely appearance. She was a virgin, and Rivka was 10 years old in those days. Okay, so that's the point that we want to talk about, like right there, her being 10 years old and... Um, 45. Okay. Yeah. What's it on 45? And Yitzhak was 40, 40 okay. years old. Okay, yeah, so going down to 45 right there, and Yitzhak was 40 years old when he took Rivka, the daughter of his uncle, Bethuel, for a woman. So we had a dude 30 years old and a 10-year-old girl. Um, that's, I don't, I, don't have any, I don't have anything on that other than I'm just observing this, and um, we can all discuss it. So here we go. And let's begin. Okay, and Abraham took another wife whose name was Katira and she bore him Zimran and Yokshan and Midan and Midian and Yishbak and Shuwak and Yokshan brought forth Sheba and Dedan and sons of Dagon were Asherim and let Ushim and Li Umim. That's tough, guys. Those are real tough. It's going to be a long chapter. Yeah, it is going to be a long chapter. It's, it's not too long on this. And the sons of Midian were Ephah and Ephor and Kanak and Abida and Elida. All of these were the children of Keturah. Now Abraham gave all he had to Yitzhak, but to the sons of the concubines whom Abraham had, Abraham gave gifts while he was still living and sent them away for, from his son Yitzhak eastward to the land of the east. All right. Let's talk about this because we live in a world that is a, you guys wouldn't 
you guys wouldn't know what to do if there was two women in this house and we had two families. And I don't think it would be two women in the house. I think it would be two houses and you would have two separate families, but they would be close enough that everybody would be a great big family. Now, I know how you guys argue as it is within our only unified little family here. Can you imagine how the different you guys would argue with the children of another woman? What do you guys think? Mm, I'm not sure, but the thing here is Sarah is dead. She's not here anymore. So this is a different thing. Right. But, I mean, continue, what what do you guys think? You guys would be happy with this? You guys, would you be... I don't know. I mean, right now, no. Of course not. Like, I had to grow up with that other family. You'd, uh, you'd have to grow up with Now I would beat them all down. Yeah. So, <laughs> Jeannie wants to know, why was Abraham allowed to take another wife? Yahushua says, would say one husband, one wife. Um, I th- I th- that... What, what, hold on. So let, let's talk about this. She, she was dead, right? She was dead. She yeah. was dead. And so, what does the Torah say for a for marriage? If you're if you're if you somebody dies, what happens? What does the Torah command? Yeah, like free from the marriage. Yeah, you go marry someone else. Yeah, you are you are free. So there is no. I mean, it, it, even though she was a, a, a widow or he was a widow, he would be able to, based upon Torah, to get another wife. And so that is the the Torah of marriage. Um, and, you know, even though Messiah, when Messiah talks about this and he says it was because of the hardness of their hearts that he allowed, that Moshe allowed people to um, write a divorcement, um, when somebody dies, you are free from that marriage. And so hopefully that answers that. Anything, anyone else have anything on that? Um, no, I, I, I do want to say that uh, um, I think the, uh, Isaac is about 40 years older than all his younger brothers here and sisters. Right. Yeah, it would be. Be really old. So he probably didn't really know them very well. Okay. Are we up to the target shit? Yeah. No, that's angry. Two more verses. Okay. Seven. Two more verses. Seven. And these are all the years of Abraham's life, which he lived. 175 years. And Abraham breathed his last and died in a good old age, aged and satisfied, and was gathered to his people. Okay. Real quick on this. So Abraham is 125, so that means Isaac is 75. And we learn a little bit that uh, he was 60 when he has kids. So he, Isaac and, or uh, Esau and Jacob both met Abraham. They were 15 years old when he died. So 15 years old. Um, and this is interesting because I was just, I'm, I'm actually personally reading through Jasher right now um, again. And, you know, we, uh, Noah, or the father of Noah died. Um, they, all these guys were like 970 years old, 940 years old. They, they were really, really old. I find it interesting here that we can go from living a thousand years old to where Abraham lived um, 175 years, right? And he breathed his last and he was satisfied. Now we're all, we're in a world, you know, and, and they've talked about this, where we're getting, we're dying much, much earlier, right? Now people die at 70s, 60s, 50s. And, and, and I'm not, I'm not going to get this YouTube channel killed, but we know why other people are dying. There, What was that? I don't know. I don't know what that is. Are we still alive? Everyone's still out there? Something's dinging here. All right, we have some ding. But um, yeah, I, I I just find that very interesting. Um, that the lifespan that we have and that they talk. You know, part of the the end times is that people die much much earlier than that. All right, if we're still on, is everyone still here? Or are we gone? You cut out for a second, but we're back. Okay. So yeah, <laughs> worldwide widow says they heard you. Okay. All right. <laughs> That's yeah, tough. yeah, we don't say things like this on YouTube. They kick you off. All right, so we're going to start on the um, the top part, which is the Targums, which is a, another translation on this. And let's begin. And Abraham added and took a wife, and her name was Keturah. She is she is Hagar, who has been bound to him from the beginning. Hold on. Yeah, I, that's what I was confused about. Wait a second. What is this even saying? So he didn't get a new calling by it was Hagar. No. No, because her name was Can't Keturah. Can't be. Can't, so I think it was somebody else. I, I don't understand. Is that her nickname? Is, is there another Hagar? Okay, this can't be the same Hagar. This cannot be, you right? Can you read that again? Okay, this is what it says. And Abraham added and took a wife, and her name was Keturah. She is Hagar, who had been bound to him from the beginning. Yeah, okay, right, let's the, read the next. The, the, the Jerusalem. Jerusalem says, she is Hagar, who had been tied to him from the beginning. Wait a second. What happened to Hagar? That can't, this cannot be Hagar. Mm-mm. Because he already wrote her a letter of divorcement. And when you write a letter of divorcement, I guess it, unless they have been defiled, I guess you could still, that's, that's the rules. So I, I don't know if this is even real or not. I, I don't Man, know. But they, they weren't like really the married, were they? No, 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 that's suspect. Yeah, that's way I, suspect. I don't think it's, because he sent her away. 
Yeah, so I and don't know. And then she had more children, and then talks about the children. Yeah, she, this, this and, and didn't say that she had Yishmael, and then all these other ones. So it's uh, they. Yeah. This, so they this this is there. this is absolutely incorrect. Can we go with this? Yeah. This is absolutely some sort of some sort of. Um, or maybe she is also like the stranger because Hagar means the stranger. Maybe it's saying that she's a stranger. She is said it. She who had been tied to him from the beginning. What is that? I mean that yeah. that's, and. That she was tied to him from the beginning because Hagar came with his wife, right? Yeah. I mean that was technical. So this can't this can't be. And so guys, this is the thing about the this this particular version of the um, the targums is we got to be very very clear. There's some good stuff that we get out of this, but there's some stuff right here that you know it's it can't be. This just can't can't be. And so we have to be um, educated enough to figure this stuff out. And we're not trying to bring any confusion at all. I don't know if once we get out of Genesis, if we'll ever read another Targums again. This was just kind of to, to see what the difference was between these. So um, you eat the meat and you spit out the bones. And this, to me, looks like some bones. Could she have been a servant of Sarah as well, like Hagar was? Two, two, two people named Hagar? Two, two no, people? she wouldn't be Hagar. She's Keturah. But could she have been Sarah's handmaid as well? Maybe. I don't know. Is that maybe what it's saying? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So we have to figure this out. Maybe Brother Glenn, he might know something. He's not on today. He's not but, on today. But he, he would probably get some stuff out of there. So I hold it, you know, chew the, chew the meat, spit the bones out. Okay. And she bare to him Zimran and Jokshan and Medan and Midian and Yishbak and Shavak and Jokshan beget Sheva and Dedan. And the sons of Dedan were merchants and negotiators and chiefs of peoples. Okay, and it's going to the other version out here. The wind is just ripping things apart out here. Okay, merchants and artificers and chiefs of people. So that's what they say the people were. The people of Dedan were merchants, and artificers, and chiefs of people. And the sons of Midian, Ephur and Ephur, and Hanuk and Ab Abida and Alda, all of these were the sons of Keturah. And Abraham gave the gifts of all he had to Ishak. And to the sons of the concubines of Abraham gave Abraham riches and movable property as gifts and sent them away from Ishak, his son, while he yet lived. And they went and dwelt eastward in the land of the Orient. And this is the number of the days of the life of Abraham, who lived 120 and five years, 100, what, 75 years, I'm going to say 125, that isn't right. Okay, who lived 170 and five years, and Abraham expired and died in a good old age, Aged and satisfied with all good. He expired. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a gallon of milk. This man just went with a gallon of milk and he expired. But he expired at the good old age and was satisfied with all good. Um, that was interesting though because at the top of that it said he added another woman. Right? He added a woman. Did you guys catch that? Yeah. 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 Targum making make a lot of. So if his wife died, then she, they would have subtracted a woman and then they added. Yeah, Targum's going. Does it say where Katora was from? The grand was wondering. I, I don't think it does. I don't think it says no. that. No. Who knows? We gotta study up on this one. We gotta see if this targum is. Look up Hagar and Katura, see if we can link them. Yep. Okay. Now we're back down to where? Eli? Uh, you are on nine. nine. All right. Here we go. Now we're back to the ex Hallelujah scriptures, Yahoo scriptures. Now nine. And his sons Yitzhak and Yishmael buried him in the cave of Machpelah, which is before Mamre, in the field of Ephron, son of Zohar the Kittite, the field which Abraham purchased from the sons of Keth. There Abraham was buried with Sarah, his wife. And it came to be, after the death of Abraham, that Elohim Barak, his son, Yitzhak, and Yitzhak dwelt at Ber Laha Roy. This is the genealogy of Yishmael, Abraham's son, who Hagar, the Mitzrayite, Sarah's female servant, bore to Abraham. Okay, hold on. Why don't you just call her Hagar? Okay, so wait, wait a second. So why are we, um, this is the genealogy of Abraham's son, whom Hagar, the Mitzrayite. So I, I find it very curious, though, we're talking about the concubine at the top, being a Hagar, and then we, we we're also saying seeing it here though. Okay, let's continue on. Anyone else seen this, or is it just me? Yeah, I know. I, I think it would say these are the genealogies of Hagar, but I, don't know, I maybe maybe not. Maybe just like talking about Ishmael only. Yeah, maybe it's only talking about Ishmael here. Okay, and these were the names of the sons of Ishmael by their names according to their gen generations. The firstborn of Ishmael, Nebioth, then Kedar, and Ab Ad Beel, and Mibsam, and Mishma and Duma and Masa, Kadad and Tima, Yeter, Nafish, and Kedma. These were the sons of Yishmael, and these were their, their names by their towns, their settlements, 
12 chiefs according to their tribes. And these were the years of the life of Yishmael, 137 years, and he breathed his last and died and was gathered to his people. So we basically, you know, went from Abraham at 175. Now his kids are dying at 137. Um, it's just going down in times. And this is before the GMO foods even came to get us. Okay. One more verse. One more. And they dwelt from Kawala as far as Shur, which is east of Mitzrayim, as you go toward Ashur, he settled before all his brothers. Okay. Now we're heading back up to Targums right here. Yeah, part in parentheses. Okay. Also, Ishmael wrought repentance in his days and afterwards was gathered to his people. Okay. Why would, um, what do you think he repented? What would... Uh, probably because he went away and he had I was, you know he was from Egypt he's, he, his mother was from Egypt and he wasn't with Abraham anymore and you know nobody had really had any know about Yahuwah besides Abraham at that time yeah he was definitely trained up in Yah okay and Isaac and Ishmael his sons buried him in the double cavern at the field of Ephron Bar Zokar the Hittite which is before Mamre the field that Abraham purchased of the sons of Hittah there was Abraham buried and Sarah his wife and because Abraham had not De designed to bless Ishmael, therefore he blessed not Isaac. Okay, what does that just say? And because Abraham had not designed <laughs> so, to bless Ishmael, therefore he blessed not Ishaq. So you can get like the blessing like he like uh like Isaac gave to Jacob. He didn't give that to him because he didn't have one for Ishmael. So he, he says I did not do the whole fairness and thing like uh, Isaac. See, this is where Abraham might have been a little uh, wiser than uh, Isaac. Mm. Okay, and then it says for he had for he. For had he blessed Ishak and not Ishmael, it would have been kept them in enmity. Okay, so he he was so basically he, wanted he was his smarter sons than the, united. Right, yeah. Even though they were from even though they hate each other growing up and they were from different women, he wanted them to be family in the end. Yeah, and I mean you could take uh, notes from <coughs> Jacob and Esau. That went re really bad. Yeah, everything went really bad. Okay. Emissary says first his repentance was from coming against his brother by drawing an arrow on him. Oh, as a child, yep. yeah, that could be, that could be. He was young too. Really young. He was like 13 or 14, I believe. Yep. Okay, let's continue on. Um, and because Abraham had not designed to bless, but after the death of Abraham, Yahuwah blessed Ishak, and Ishak dwelt near the well, at which was revealed the glory of the living and eternal one, who seeth and is not seen. And these are the generations of Ishmael bar Abraham, whom Hagar, the Mitzrayah, the handmaid of Sarah, bare unto Abraham. And these are the names of the sons of Ishmael by their names, according to their generations. The firstborn is Ishmael, Neboi, and Arab, and Abdil, and Mibsham, hearing, silence, patience, and sharpness. Okay, I don't know why it went from their names to that, but um, or maybe that's what their names mean. And Tima, Yetzer, Nafish, and Kedema, these were the sons of Ishmael, and these their names in their villages, and in their fenced dwellings, 12 chiefs of their peoples. And these are the years of the life of Ishmael, a hundred and thirty and seven years, and he was co coverted in repentance, coverted in repentance and expired, and was gathered to his people. And they dwelt from Hindiki unto Kalutsa, which is before the face of Mizraim, from going up to Ather, before the face of all his brethren, he dwelt in his possession. And then the other version says, in their villages and in their fenced dwellings or encampments, 12 chiefs of their people, and they dwelt from Hindekia unto Kalusuta, which is this, by the side of Mizraim, from there going upwards towards Arthur before all his brethren dwelt. Okay, so here we are. Is that the end of this one? No, it's like weird. Uh, the term like has like different sections. But I, didn't put, like, I think as it breaks down, you know, it breaks down into Abraham's life, then it goes into Ishmael's, and now it's we're about to go into Isaac's life. Okay. Hold in, on. What do you got? Says, so Midian was the son of Abraham by Keturah. Yitro was a Midianite, Moshe's father-in-law. Yeah. 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 So this could be right. Uh, something we see in Jasher is that uh, a lot of the uh, Middle Eastern nations that uh, we hear in the Bible and that we have today are from Abraham, from Keturah. Right. Like Midian, all the rest of the people are all different names. The Dan. Yeah, they all become actually Middle Eastern tribes that we hear of today still. So maybe Grand is on something. Maybe 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 this could be it. But maybe Katora was just from. Maybe she was just a stranger. Maybe it wasn't the Hagar. The the, the or what was Hagar mean? The stranger. The stranger. Yeah. No stranger. Ha, ha is the, and then Gar is stranger. Yeah, and so maybe it's just another person they called. Maybe they called everybody strangers. Hey, stranger, how you doing? Hey, Hagar, how you doing? I I don't know. So, all right, let's continue on. 
Um, where are we 19. at? 19. And this is the genealogy of Yitchek, Abraham's son. Abraham brought forth Yitchek, and Yitchek was 40 years old when he took Ribka as wife, the daughter of Bethuel, the Armenian of Pada Aram, the sister of Laban, the Armenian. And Yitchek prayed to Yahuwah for his wife because she was barren. And Yahuwah answered his prayer, and Ribka, his wife, conceived. And within her, the children struggled. And she said, is all, if all is right, why am I this way? So she went to ask Yahuwah. And Yahuwah said to her, two nations are in your womb, and two people shall be separated from your body, and one people shall be stronger than the other, and the older serve the younger. All right, so I have, we have a woman here who had twins. Did they struggle in your stomach, Miss Nicole? Oh, yeah. Did they? We know that Jaden went flying all over. You could see him in your stomach go from like up top all the way to the bottom. These, these little fellers would, would fly from one side to the next. What we, we pushed Caden all the way to one side, and then Jaden had all the rest of the belly. Yeah, and we're pretty sure Jaden was the wild one. Um, he was the one that was always going crazy in there. Caden was always the, um, I guess, the calm real, one. the calm one. So uh, Jade wanted out of there, and he got out there first. So um, that's very interesting. Here we go. 24. And when the days were filled for her to give birth, and see, twins were in her womb. Ah, okay. And the first came out reddish all over, like a hairy garment. So they called his name Esau. I have all sorts of twin jokes here, but I won't get into them. Okay, and afterward, his brother came out with his hand holding onto Esau's heel. So his name was called Jacob. And Yitzhak was 60 years old when she bore them. Okay, and Yitzhak, so Yitzhak was 60 years old. His wife would have been 30. 30. And that was her first set of kids. So that was 20 years I don't think after. they had any more kids. I don't, I never mentioned anybody. They might have had some, you know, Abraham had more kids. I think with these guys, two is enough. Okay, and the boys grew up. And Esau became a man, knowing how to hunt, a man of the field, while Jacob was yeah. a complete man, dwelling in tents. What am I supposed to do? You were supposed to go up to the top. Oh, you, you, was, give me a sign, bro. I did. Okay, give me a better Three sign. Times. Okay, these are, uh, heading up to the top, guys, sorry. I, I got my little navigator here. Um, heading up to the top. These are the generations of Isaac, bar Abraham. And because the appearance of Isaac resembled the appearance of Abraham, the sons of men said, in truth, Abraham beget Isaac, and Ishak was the son of 40 years when he took Rivka, the daughter of Bethuel, the Armenite, who was of Pada Aram, the sister of Laban, the Ar Armenite, unto him for a wife. Now, this is, this is kind of why I do like some of the stuff. Hold on. Go back. This is why I kind of like, do like kind of stuff in the, um, in, into this, this Targums, because there's something here. Did we know that Isaac looked like Abraham? Have we ever heard that before? No, I don't think so. This is the first time that we ever heard that. And so I think these are these details that I hope they're true on all this stuff because I, I don't know about the very first part of that where we don't know about um, the stranger. We still don't know about Og riding the boat either. Yeah, or, and Og riding the boat. That was completely, um, that was completely out there, <laughs> oh, I think. surfing trip. Yeah. All right, let's continue on. Eli, where are we at here? We're on. In truth, Abraham begat Isaac, and Isaac was the son of 40 years when who was of Pada or Ram, the sister of Laban, the army, for a wife. And Isaac went to the mountain of worship, the place where his father had bound him. And Isaac, in his prayer, turned the attention of the Holy One, blessed be he, from that which he had decreed concerning him who had been childless. And he was enlarged, and Rivka, and his wife, was with child. And the children pressed in her womb as men doing battle. And she said, if this is the anguish of a mother, what then are children to me? And she went into the school of Shim Rabbah to supplicate mercy before Yahuwah. All right, there we go. We talked about Shim again. So um, this is something we did not know. Dude, he outlived everyone. Yeah, we did not know until we read the Targums of who the Melchizedek priest back in the day was. Um, and so this is very interesting. Shim looks like a, um, a leader over these guys, right? He, he became like a... Um, like somebody, everybody went to Shem. Everybody, Shem was involved in a lot of this stuff, which is, which is quite amazing. Um, this is interesting, interesting well, too, because we don't have anything other than they just, they fought in the stomach. This gives us this, that, um, you know, it says that they're pressed in her womb as men doing battle. Um, that's kind of wild, right? All right, let's continue on. Jerusalem part. Jerusalem part, right here. And the children pressed in her womb, and she said, If such be the anguish of a mother, what now is life that children are to be mine? 
And she went to supplicate mercy before Yahuwah in Beth Midrash of Shimrala. And Yahuwah said to her, two, people, two peoples are in thy womb, and two kingdoms from thy womb shall be separated, and one kingdom shall be stronger than the other, and the elder shall serve the younger. If the children of the younger will keep the commandments of the law. Wow, hold on real quick. This is something we have never, ever heard before again. It says right here, I love it when it says this stuff, that the younger will keep the commandments of the law. This is the stuff you get in the, in the Targums that you do not get anywhere else. And even in the earlier parts of Genesis, it talks about keeping the laws of our creator. And somehow that has been taken out of the, the scriptures that we have in today's stuff, right? It's all about the laws. Brother Glenn showed up. Hey, it's Brother Glenn. You'll have to rewatch this, Brother Glenn. Uh, we, we had some questions. Yeah, we had some questions at the beginning of the Targums. I'll paste this to you when uh, we are done, and maybe you can um, help us out because... His working nights is not what it used to be when he was 50 years younger. Yeah, well, it's uh, Brother Glenn's like 70-something years old running 24-hour shifts these days, so he's definitely doing his job. Okay, here we go. And the 270 days of her being with child were completed to bring forth and behold, twins were in her womb, and the first came forth wholly red as a garment of hair. And they called his name Esau, because he was born altogether complete, with the hair of the head, and with the beard, and teeth, and grinders. Hold on. Wait, what? Wait a second. Okay. Um, I don't... What, you guys, what do you guys make of this? Uh, maybe... Bro had a huge, I mean, he has uh, a beard. Yeah, I, I don't think it's a beard. I, I would say he, he probably had little fuzzy hairs, um, like little, uh, I don't know, little fluffy hairs or something of the sort, right? But with teeth, too? Teeth? I don't know about it. What, what, oh, what does this mean? How can this Babies be? Babies aren't. I don't know. I say you can't like a grown man. What's going on here? See, I, first I say I like the Targums, and then I get down to the next thing. And I'm like, what do you What do you mean this guy came out with beard and a teeth? And grinders. What it's are like grinders? Like a man. What are grinders? Is that your uh, wisdom teeth? I don't know. Grinders, maybe. I mean, it said he had teeth or something. Uh, it's, this guy can't come out with full teeth. No. This is this some, something that's funny. That here. doesn't actually happen. So what do we make of this? Is this, what's going on here? All right, let's read the next version of this. And the first came forth holy, okay, I already got that one. No, it actually is Jerusalem. The first came forth holy red as a garment of hair, and they called his name Esau. Afterward came forth his brother, and his hand had hold of the heel of Esau, and they called his name Yaakov. And Ishak was, was a son of 60 years when he beget them. Okay. And we are here. And so we're heading back down to the bottom, trying still uh, thinking about this baby born with teeth and grinders, whatever that is. Okay. And the boys grew up, and Esau became a man, knowing how to hunt, a man of the field, while Yaakov was a complete man, dwelling in tents. What does that mean, complete man? What does that mean? Uh, baby knew how to well, okay, okay. Right? Does that mean... Uh, Josh here explains that. He says that because... He knew how to read. He was able to study the scriptures where Esau didn't want to learn that. He never learned that. He only learned how to hunt and kill. Right. Okay. And like I, he was like, he basically, he learned how to cook. He learned how to read. He basically became an educated man. Right. Okay. I got it. 28. And Yitchak loved Esau because he ate of his wild game. But Rivka loved Yaakov. Well, that is, um, that's an interesting that's kind criteria. Of messed, that's a little messed up. Why is that? It's like you have both sides of the families having favorites and both parents having favorites. And that's hey, hey, if you guys go out and kill me something awesome and tasty, I might do this whole thing. Who's going to give me the tastiest thing? Considering yeah, Jaden, there you go. Considering, <laughs> considering we can't kill the cow. Yeah, considering we, we're unable to put a bullet in the cow's head, um, I guess we're not going to have anything tasty. The problem is Caden can't cook either. Yeah, Caden can't cook either. So lentils for us. Uh, here we go. Um, and 29. 29. And Jacob cooked a stew. And Esau came from the field, and he was weary. And Esau said to Jacob, Please feed me with that same red stew, for I am weary. That is why eat him. But Jacob said, Sell me your birthright today. And Esau said, Look, I am going to die, so why should I have a birthright? All right, no, none of this would make any sense unless you have the extracurricular books Jasher, Jubilees, uh, these other books that tell us why in the world that this guy would say my birthright is no good, it doesn't matter, and why in the world would this guy sell it for a pot of soup? Okay, anyone want to explain this? It tells you in Targums. Oh, it does tell us in Targums? Okay. Kind of. We'll read not, not completely. Not completely? All right, well, let's let's do a spoiler alert. Why did this guy just sell his his birthright for a bowl of beans? So in Jasher, we have the story of, of Esau who's hunting out, and Nimrod is still alive during this time. This dude has outlived everyone at this point. He is just... He's like the king of land, he got all these servants, all these people, and Esau was in the field and he saw Nimrod, and well, everyone knew that Nimrod was a bad dude. 
So Esau went out and he killed him and killed his two strongest guards with him and all the people fled. And so Esau came home and he's like, I'm going to die. These people are going to come back and try and kill me. I just killed their king who reigned over them for years. They love this dude. I'm going to die. So he's like, just give me the food. I'll leave. And you got my birthright. It doesn't do me any good at this point. I'm gone. Yeah, so this dude just came in from killing the baddest dude who ever was to do it. Um, the hunter of men and the hunter against, really, Yah. Um, this guy just slaughtered him and killed him. And so he was like, he was a dead man walking. You're not going to kill King Nimrod and live and everybody's going to be after you. Um, that was the man of the day back then. Um, evil man of the day, of course, but um, that was your man. And so, yeah, he went and he sold his birthright for a bowl of stew. Uh, and so here we go. Um, and Esau said, look, I'm going to die. So why should I have a birthright? 33. Then Jacob said, swear to me today. And he swore to him and sold his birthright to Jacob. Jacob then gave Esau bread and stew of lentils. And he ate and drank and rose up and left. Thus Esau despised his birthright. Hey, we have lentils almost every single day. In fact, we do have lentils every single day. This is amazing. So did, so did uh, I guess, Esau. It seems like we have some... Uh, I guess we could sell our lentils. It might be worth a lot. They I mean, might if, give us their birthright. Maybe, yeah. We may, you guys need to go on the road and see if you can buy some birthrights or something for us. All right, well, let's continue on. Let's go up to the Targums at the top. And the lads grew, and Esau was a man of idleness to catch birds and beasts, a man going forth into the field to kill lives, and Nimrod had killed, and Kanak, his son, Hanok. Okay, hold on. So what do you, what do you make of this? He says his idleness to catch birds and beasts. Is it hard to catch a bird and a beast? Maybe. What do you mean, maybe? Yeah. How many, how many, how many I mean, times do you, you kill a cow? A birds, birds are going to be easier than beasts, right? But beasts are huge. You got to deal with you really deal with them. How is a hunter an idleness? You have to have a lot of patience. Yeah, but I mean, I feel like it's idleness in the word. I feel like it's idleness in the learning of Yahuwah. I don't feel like, I think because you think doing his own thing, he's rather go out, kill things, and uh, learn. I think is what this is. Maybe. Yeah, that's interesting, though. He calls it idleness, though, because it is, hunting is an extremely hard job. It's, it's not easy. Okay. Um, but Jacob was a man peaceful in his words, a minister of the instruction house of Eber, seeking instruction before Yahuwah. Okay, Eber, okay, so in, in between the time, I think Shem dies. Somehow Shem dies, and Eber, Shem's son, becomes the new priest. So Eber was the one that taught Jacob all his stuff. He's the one that sat with him and taught him his stuff. Yeah, you have something? Mm -mm. Okay. But Jacob was a man of peace, man peaceful in his words, a minister of the instruction house of Eber, seeking instruction before Yahuwah, and Isaac loved Esau. For the words of deceit were in his mouth, but Rivka loved Jacob. Okay, why does this say, for Isaac loved Esau, for words of deceit were in his mouth? It was because he was flattering his dad or something? Yeah, I don't maybe. I think so. It's interesting, though. One version of it says he likes his stew, and this one says it's like he, he almost spoke with deceit. This is interesting. All right, let's continue on. I don't have answers for this. Let's see. On that day. On that day. On the day. Okay. On that day that Abraham died, Jacob dressed pottage of lentils and was going to comfort his father. And Esau came from the wilderness exhausted, for in that day he had committed five transgressions. He had worshipped with strange worship. Is this talking about Esau? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So Esau. And, five sins. Yeah. Okay. So let's try this again. And Esau came from the wilderness exhausted, for in that day he committed five transgressions. He had worshipped with strange worship. He had shed innocent blood. He had gone in unto a da bethrowed damsel. He had denied the life of the world to come and had despised the birthright. All right, let's talk uh, about this real quick. I don't know that despised the world to come. I don't know what that means. What about innocent blood? Nimrod was not innocent. Neither was the people he was with. Uh, so was there something else? I'm sure, this man. I don't know. He, he might have killed an innocent person. He might. Maybe along the maybe way. Maybe someone that saw it or something, he just went and killed him. Huh? Maybe. Maybe like, there's he, something else. He, he took this a, wasn't quite the day. He took an engaged woman. He was busy. Yeah, this was a busy day. How could this all happen in a day? This I don't know if this, this happened could, several days. This had to, yeah, this had to be probably, probably over. Goes out, it probably goes out field for a few days and comes back after a hundred, probably a few day trip. Yeah, maybe he was on uh, with, think, the, with the damsel or something, and then he went, as he's heading home, he found Nimrod out there, and everything went God. downhill from there. Um, and despised his birthright. I mean, he had already. Is that a sin? Is that a sin to despise your birthright? I don't know. I don't know. According to this, it is. I don't know. Let's continue on. And Esau said to Jacob, Let me now taste the red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore, so he called his name Edom. And Jacob said, Sell today, as on this very day, that thou wouldest hereafter appropriate thy birthright unto me. And Esau said, Behold, I am going to die, and in another world I shall have no life. And what then to me is the birthright or the portion in the world of which thou speakest? And Jacob said, 
swear to me this day so that it shall be. And he swore to him and sold his birthright to Jacob. And Jacob gave to Esau bread and pottage for lentils. And he ate and drank and arose and went. And Esau scorned the birthright and the portion of the world that cometh. Okay. Um, do you think this was like a really good pot of lentils? Do you think this was know. worth it? Probably for him. I mean, at this point, I mean, you're going to die. He's probably going to last meal. Yeah. You, you know, that's, that's the thing about fear. Fear will get us like that. Okay. And then we'll continue on to the Jerusalem here. And it says, and he arose and went and Esau despised the birthright and vilified the portion in the world that cometh and denied the resurrection of the dead. Okay. Okay, so yeah, he, he doesn't believe there's no afterlife. He doesn't believe in the heaven. But is that, a, is that a sin or something? Um, I mean, can we not have opinions? Or, or probably thoughts? because he doesn't believe Yahuwah, because he doesn't believe anything about Yahuwah or something like that. So. Yeah, he would be very. He would be closer to Yah and closer to the people that walked with Yah than, than we would and at this he, point. He should be understanding stuff, but since he probably he probably knows, he's probably been taught this stuff like uh, Sheol and stuff. Okay. But uh, he's probably like, uh, I don't, I'm not going to believe this, he's been told all his life. I mean, he was probably around Shem. He's around Abraham, so at least 50. 15 years old, he had Isaac, he had all these other people that believed Yahuwah, then he despises what he, what everyone has told him, so, maybe. Yeah. Interesting, all right. Sylvia says, it reminds me of the world we're living in. People will go to the extreme to get food. There are lots of riots going on in my country, and people will burn down malls and loot. Yeah, ab absolutely. Yeah, no, hey, hey, Sylvia, we haven't seen you in here. And anyone else we haven't said hi to, hi. Yeah, that's absolutely right. The wickedness is, is abounding in, in many, many ways. Um, you know, that's that's the thing about the world we're living in in the last days, right? We know it's the last days because we see the actions of what people are doing. And I, I have a, you know, I, I guess I won't have a fear, but, you know, the, the future that is coming is that they are going to famine the world. They are going to take the food away from people. And, you know, our, our hope is not in this world. Our hope is not in these madmen. Our hope is no, nowhere in this stuff. Our hope is in an Elohim most high who's, who will take care of us. And who will exit us when the time is right? And so um, we can't get down on these, these things. And, and even though the world is, is literally burning right before our eyes, this is our time, right? This is the time to get close to Yah. This is the time that we should seek him and, you know, tell people, you know, there's, there is hope out there. It's just not this sick world that we live in by any means. Okay. Um, I guess that is it. Anyone else have anything? Uh, we have the Aaronic blessing. All right, let's let's uh, let's close everyone out with an Aaronic blessing, and um, I guess we will say much love to you. And for those, you know, our music selection is very very slim, guys, because everybody seems to give us um, strikes on the music, and so we we're literally we only have like one artist, James Block, who who doesn't give people strikes. So that's why we use it because if we don't use his music, then um, they put ads on this, and so you'll have two hundred people to get you know, hellacious ads of evil stuff as we're trying to, you know, keep people away from this world. So um, that's why it's the same music every time. And so hopefully you guys don't get too bored of it. We love you all very, very much. Thank you guys very, very much for joining us. And Jade, will you please exit us with an ironic blessing for everybody that is out there. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto El Aaron and unto his sons, saying, On this wise you shall bless the children of Yashrael, saying unto them, Yahuwah bless you and guard you. Yahuwah make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. It will lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Yashrael, and I will bless them. Yeah. All right, beautiful. Yeah, and emissary, as far as that guy goes, everybody you've suggested, they all give us um, not strikes, not copyright strikes, but they, they go and they start putting ads on all the videos. And so that's everything we're trying to do. All right, guys, we love you guys very, very much. Let us uh, say goodbyes to you all, which is really sad, and we love you, and we will... Um, See you guys very, very soon. Where's Rin the Heavens? Let's end it with this. I can't see it. I think it's right under this. And right there. Hey. Right there. All right. There we go. Hit it, Sam. All right. Much love, everybody.
Much love, everybody. We love you very, very much. Shabbat shalom, and have a wonderful day. All right. Shalom. shalom.